uh, speak unto you his will and what he has sent me here. Amen? Amen. So this day I'm speaking to you about the armor of God. That is the, uh, the topic of today. And then when we speak of the armor of God, we speak of the weapons that the Lord has, uh, wants us to have that we may fight uh, in our warfare. Amen? Amen. Last week on Sunday, we were told that this is our journey uh, of salvation. It is a spiritual warfare. Uh, but in the book of, uh, I can start with this, in the book of Psalms 34, verse 19. Psalms 34, verse 19. It says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers uh, him out of them all. Amen. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all of them. And uh, the Lord is good. And uh, though we are in this uh, we are in this warfare, He has given us this that we may endure. And then for us to start, I will start. Uh, why do we need to fight? I will just emphasize what we have been told, what the, uh, we have been told in the previous sermons. Amen. 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 So I will just read in the book of Second Corinthians ten. From verse 3 to 6. 2 Corinthians 10, from verse 3 to 6. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. We walk in the flesh, but we do not walk according to the flesh. And then the next one, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that meaning the fleshly, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So these strongholds are, uh, are uh, the, uh, the powers that have stood against us. So we have to fight them and pull them down that we may do the will of God and continue in His grace. The next verse. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We know that the Lord has, uh, has saved us from our sins by His mercy, that uh, we may live a life that is pleasing unto Him. But then there are arguments that we may engage in, but that are not uh, according to His will. But the Lord is telling us this day, we have these weapons. We have to have these weapons of war that you may cast down these arguments that are not in line with the will. And then the next one, and then every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is His word, and that there are things which are uh, standing to, uh, to put a stumbling block that you may not uh, go ahead and serve the Lord fruitfully and serve Him with all our heart. So, these are uh, weapons that the Lord wants us to have. It is for putting, uh, putting this uh, uh, high thing, all high things that exalt themselves again, the, the knowledge of God down, bringing every thought <coughs> into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Our thoughts we know. And uh, all our thinking, our imaginations, they may bring trouble unto us in this work of salvation that God has given us. But then we have to bring them unto captivity to the obedience of the word of God. Amen? Amen. Then the next one. And being ready to punish all disobedience uh, when your obedience is fulfilled. And then after we have fought for all this time, uh, the Lord tells us that. This disobedience that comes after we have fought all of this and put them down, the Lord is telling us that we have to put them down, that we may continue uh, progressing, growing maturity, and uh, reach the will of the Lord. And then I will read the next uh, portion of the scripture, Ephesians 6, chapter 10, verse 13, where we draw our topic. Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. It also speaks why we need to have this 
and we cause of warfare. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. We have to be strong that you may fight. We have to be strong that you may overcome the tribulation that come before us, the, uh, the stamping block that are before us. And then, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wives of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wives of the devil. We have to put on the whole, not partial of it, not part of it, but we have to put the whole of it that we may be able to stand. If we, this means that if we put half of it, we will not be able to stand. But the Lord tells us that let us put all of it uh, on. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood. Our war is not against men. It is not against uh, men. But then against principalities. Principalities, one of them uh, is uh, principalities about princes. We know that the story of Daniel, when uh, he was praying, he, he, the word of the Lord did not reach him. This is uh, Daniel 10, 12 to 14. The word of the Lord did not reach him because there were princes. There, there was a prince of Persia who was preventing the word of the Lord from reaching his people. And that when he had prayed, the Lord uh, uh, brought an angel, a mighty angel, to stand. And then the message of the Lord came. And then against powers, we know that powers make uh, powers have all authority to uh, to effect uh, ways to effect uh, laws that they may afflict us. Some of these laws, some of these laws, uh, laws are right, but then, but there are some laws which are not uh, which are not in line with the will of God. So we are fighting against these powers that. Uh, uh, effect these people laws and then against the rulers of darkness of this age we know that rulers we have rulers in our countries in our, in our country our rulers make laws they make laws and if they make laws that are not in line with the will of god we shall suffer and if uh, that nation suffers we as christians also will suffer so we are uh, fighting against that uh, inner ruler that rules their hearts that they may make these through uh, rulings and then against the spiritual cause of wickedness in the heavenly places. We are fighting also against this. And then verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, the Lord tells us that we have to take out the whole of this armor that you may be able to fight. And after fighting, we will not go down, we will not. Uh, go back to, uh, to witness, but we will stand in faith and walk and uh, walk in truth. Amen? Amen. So, the next thing I'd like us to know, what are these uh, schemes, the way the evil one fights? What are these schemes and strategies? How does it fight us? One of them is through lies. He lies to us uh, mainly according to the scripture of the Lord. We get it in Genesis 3, 1-7. This is the story of uh, Eve and Adam. Say that now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Has God in has God in this said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden. That is the first step he does. He speaks to him according to what the Lord has said, and then he tries to challenge her. But then and the woman said, the serpent, this is what the Lord has said, may, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, nor you shall touch it, lest you die. The Lord was uh, right, the Lord was sure, he has said that you shall not eat of it, lest you die. But then the serpent comes in and says, uh, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. That is the first lie. Uh, that is the lie that he has told you there. And then, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will uh, be like God, knowing good and evil. He had brought uh, a lie before and now justifies that lie. 
That is how he, he operates the devil. And then, so the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was good to that to the eyes, and the tree was desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruits and it, she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. The last one. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed our fig trees together and made themselves covering. So this is the way the devil was. The evil was lied unto them. He still lies unto us at this moment. Uh, it is uh, in, I think, Matthew, he says that you, he tells the Israelites, the Pharisees, that your father is the evil one. He has been alive from before, and he's still alive. So the evil one is a, the, the devil is alive, and he plans to ruin us. So we must stand and fight him. The second one, uh, is, he blinds our eyes that we may not see the grace of God. This we find in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 to 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 to 4. Uh, but even if our gospel is failed, it is failed to those who are perishing, whose minds uh, the God of this age are blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So he blinded their eyes that they may not see the grace of God. This grace uh, is the light that, uh, that is of the gospel of Christ, Gos uh, glory, gospel of the glory of Christ, is the image of God. He has blinded their eyes, they are not seen. So this is the second way that he operates. The second one, at that one, he gives momentary pleasures. Pleasures that satisfy our flesh and make us think that we are able by ourselves. Uh, in Matthew 4, verse 3 to 4, when Jesus Christ himself had come from the mountain praying, the devil one came and tempted him. And then now the tempter, now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the son, son of God, command that these thoughts become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So uh, he, he tried to give him momentary pleasure. That pleasure was, he, he will be satisfied. If he, had, he had all the power to make that soul to be bread, but he did not. What did he say? It is written that a man shall live by every word that comes from the Lord, not by this flesh which is temporary. Amen? Amen. And then in John, verse, uh, John 10 verse 10, we know this verse. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have, this is Jesus Christ, I have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. The thief does not come except to steal. He first steals you. After stealing you from the brethren, after stealing you while you are uh, out of the fellowship of children of God, he makes of it, kills you. He kills what the Lord has planted in you and makes it unfruitful. And then after that one, he will destroy you. So, is this uh, the will of the Lord? Yes. It is not. So, this, for this we must stand and fight this enemy. Amen? Amen. So those are the ways that the enemy fights. And uh, we have to stand and fight for actually, he still fights till now. And if we do not stand, he will still fight and he will overcome if we do not have this armor of God. So what are these, uh, what are some of the weapons of God? The whole arm of God, what are some of them? It has start in Ephesians 6 verse 14 to 20. Ephesians 6 verse 14 to 20. We start with the first one. So after telling them, uh, after, after telling us that uh, we, uh, after fighting this, we will stand in faith. He tells us, stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth. So the first armor of God is truth. And what is it about this truth? The word of God is truth. We find this in John 17, 15 to 17. The word of God is truth. John 17, verses 15 to 17. Uh, 
I do not say that you should take them out of the world. This is Jesus Christ praying for the disciples when he wanted, uh, when he was about to be crucified. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen? Amen. So we get there that the word of the Lord is truth. It is this truth. The Lord, uh, the Lord uh, he knew that he would not take them to heaven while he went there. But he was, uh, he was leading them with this truth. And he asked the Lord, the Father, that he sanctify this, uh, the disciples with, uh, by his truth, the truth of God. And uh, for you, the word of God is truth. And then we find in John 14, verse 6, that Jesus Christ is also the truth. He says, I am the truth, the way and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we have the second truth. It is Jesus Christ himself. And uh, we know that Jesus Christ is also the word. So this scripture in John 17, 15, 17, 12, 14, verse 6, they interrelate with, because we know that Jesus Christ is the same word. And then, the Spirit of God has been given unto us to guide us unto all truth of God. This we find in John 16, 12 to 13. John 16, 12 to 13. God knowing that we will face these tribulations, we will face these uh, trials, he has given us his word, uh, the his spirit that he may guide us. I still have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, this is the word, the spirit of truth, the spirit of the word of God, the spirit of Jesus Christ has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you the things to come. And then he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it unto you. So the Lord has not left us alone. Though we are in this uh, struggle, we are in this fight, he has not left us alone. He has given us his spirit to give us the truth that we may live and please the Lord. The next uh, thing about this truth it does is that it makes us free. John 8 verse 30 to 32. John 8 verse 30 to 32. And he spoke these words, uh, and as he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples in me. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. He tells them that they shall know this truth, they shall know this, they shall have this knowledge of Jesus Christ if they only abide in him. They shall know this truth, and this truth shall set them free. Uh, the next one. The Lord is near to those who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to those who call upon him in truth. We find this in Psalms 145 verse 18. If we call unto the Lord in truth from deep inside our hearts and in sincerity, he is willing to listen unto us for this truth is revealed. The Lord is near to all who call him upon him, uh, to call him, to call who, to all who call upon him in truth. Amen? Amen. So let us be to call the Lord in truth. Uh, indeed, he shall hear, hear us. Uh, the last thing about this truth I'd like to share with you is that the Lord wants us to buy the truth and sell it not. Proverbs 23, verse 23. Proverbs 23, verse 23. It says, Let us all read, buy the truth and do not sell it. Also, is true. And instruction and understanding. He says, buy it, buy this truth, and do not sell it. Also, wisdom and instructions and understanding. He's asking us to buy this truth, and we know that 
this truth, uh, it is fought for. The enemy is fighting that we may not know it. This truth, that the Lord loves us and he has given us grace to save us and to make us his disciples. But then we must buy it because we have to fight. Amen? Amen. So there are many ways that uh, we have to buy this truth, but some of the ways is uh, some of the we know that when we want to buy something, we must have currency. So, so this currency of buying this truth is not things that are, it's not money, it's not currency that we know, but it is bought through hunger. One of them, that we, how we buy this truth is through hunger of the Lord. Hunger of the Lord. Let us desire that we may have the Lord in our lives, that He may work in us, that He may work inside us. To effect his way in us that we may not sin against him, but remain firm till the time he comes and take us home. For we know that this is not our home, our home is in heaven. Amen? Amen. Even Abraham knew about it when the Lord told him to move to a new city, to move to a new place. He did not hesitate, he just went there because he knew that even if the Lord uh, takes him to that place, that is not the place that the Lord. Who uh, eventually will like him to live, but he will live in heaven and behold his Lord. So that is the first armor of God, the belt of truth. And we, I, I, I remember in high school, uh, one of the teachers used to tell us that we are now in Uganda, so <laughs> let us hold this belt in truth. <laughs>
all of us have sinned and we are not in exception but the Lord has given us a way uh, has given us righteousness let us preach to being just uh, even the righteousness of God it is of God through faith in Jesus Christ he has given us through faith to all and on all who believe so if we believe in Jesus Christ he gives us this righteousness and truth and then there is no difference there is no impartiality in him he gives to all that uh, believe in him uh, this righteousness we obtain it by mercy God trains it upon us Hosea 10 verse 12 Hosea 10 verse 12 so we obtain it by mercy it is not by our strength it is not by our own works, it is not by our own powers, but we obtain it by our mercy. So for yourselves, righteousness, bring in mercy. So we bring it in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, till he comes and raises righteousness on you. So he will come, uh, he will seek him. It is for now, it is the time to seek the Lord, and we will not. Uh, stop seeking him till he has, he has rained righteousness upon us. Uh, we remember one of uh, the, the characters in the Bible that is Israel. While, while he was fighting with the angel, he did not leave, leave him. He did not want him to leave him alone, but uh, to bless him. So let us fight and let us seek the Lord till we obtain this righteousness that he gives us. And then those who hunger and thirst for this righteousness shall be filled. And then those who are persecuted for, this, for the sake of this righteousness, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This we know, it is in the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 6 and verse 10. Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So, if you hunger and ask for this righteousness, if you seek it diligently, if you seek it with all your strength and with all your might, for God says that uh, uh, it's what those who obey him must obey his commandment. So if we seek this righteousness through his word, through him, Jesus Christ, who is the word, we shall find it and we shall give him by your first name. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Many times we find ourselves being isolated because we have chosen to believe in Jesus Christ, we have chosen to trust in Him, we have chosen to love Him with all our heart. But then there is an assurance here that blessed are you who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for you are in the kingdom of heaven. So let us not stop or cease fighting. Uh, for this righteousness, for indeed we shall obtain it. And then there is some aspect that we may get in our lives that is called self-righteousness. This act is not the will of God. We get it in Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. Luke 18, 9 to 14. It is about the Pharisee while he was praying. Uh, and he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. He spoke Jesus Christ that uh, to those who trusted in their own righteousness, in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. This is not the will of God. And then the next one. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and one the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, and just adulterers, and even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess, and the tax collector, standing afar off, will not so much raise his eyes to heaven, but be his best and say, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen? Amen. So we may find ourselves uh, speaking that 
we have made it because of ourselves. We have righteousness because of ourselves, but it's not the will of God. We are obtained by grace and mercy of God, and uh, the Lord wants us to have it and uh, glorify Him only. Let us not uh, do us, uh, ourselves righteous because of our own might, but let us also regard others as also the Lord has favored them, the Lord Himself who gives to all as He desires. For He says that He reigns to the righteous and the wicked also. So this was about the breastplate of righteousness. Then the, the next verse in Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. And having shown you your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace. Having shown your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, you have to prepare yourself for the grace uh, for to preach this gospel of the Lord, the gospel of Jesus Christ that He has given us. Why do we preach this gospel? The, the gospel is the power of God and salvation. That is in Romans 1.16. And then God has loved us and wants to, uh, to consign us through Him through the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know it in John 3.16, the Lord loved us and he sent his son Jesus Christ to come and die for us, die for us that we may obtain salvation and he said unto him, this is the gospel. And then, uh, it is by the grace of God and not our might. This is in Acts 20 verse 24. Let us have this. Acts 20 verse 24. But none of this, uh, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my my dear my life dear to myself, so that I may finish the, my race with joy, and the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. It is by the grace of God that we have obtained this salvation, this uh, gospel, and then. God has commanded us to preach the gospel. This is our mandate. While uh, when he, want, he, 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 he went to heaven, he gave us a mandate that we have to minister. We have to preach the gospel of the Lord. Uh, this we find in Mark 16, verse 15 to 16. Mark 16, 15 to 16. And he said, uh, to them, go into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So the Lord has given us, has given us a command that we have to preach this gospel. So it is in line with the, our wishes this December. The Lord has ordained us, he has given us a mandate that we have to go and preach this gospel. Make it known to the world that the Lord uh, indeed is living and uh, he has overcome the dead. And then Jesus himself also did the gospel, which we see in Mark 1, 14, verse 15. And then the last thing that I would like to encourage us is that we should not be ashamed of this gospel. It is we find in 2 Timothy 1, 8 to 10. 2 Timothy 1, 8 to 10. Therefore, do not be ashamed of, of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which he has given us to us, uh, given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. And then but has now been revealed and by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So let us not be ashamed of the gospel. If uh, people say that I am a Christian, I have been saved, I am born again, and I belong to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let us be not be ashamed.
The next one is the shield of faith. Stay in Ephesians. Uh, the Lord said that we have we have to have this shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts, fiery whites of the wicked one. So in Hebrews 11, verse 1, we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for. And then faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So it is more than what we see. It is more than what we see with our own eyes. But it is believing in what we cannot see. Uh, that the Lord is able to do this. And then... Uh, in Galatians 2 verse 20, we live by faith in Jesus Christ. We live by faith in Jesus Christ. Our lives now... It's not led by ourselves, but it is led by the faith uh, that we have in Jesus Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And uh, the life which I now live in the flesh is by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself to me. So we find this God. He loved me. He loved you. And he gave himself unto you. It is no longer you who live, but him in you that lives. And we live in faith uh, in the Son of God, who is Jesus Christ himself. We thank the Lord for that. Amen? Amen. And then, we may have faith, but no works. This will not be effective. Faith without action is dead. James 2, 15-17. James 2, 15-17. are needed for the body, what does it prove? Thus, also, uh, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Amen? Amen? So, let us incorporate our faith with works. And then, there is a reward for those who keep faith in the end. In 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8, is talks about uh, uh, Paul, when he was telling Timothy, I fought the, I fought the race, I have kept the faith, and before me they set a crown. I have fought the good fight, and I have faced the race, I have kept the faith. And then the next one. Finally, they laid for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to those who have loved his appearing. So there is a reward for this. Uh, one last thing about this faith is that by faith men were healed. When they were asked, do you want me to heal you? Do you believe that I can heal you? They said yes, because they believed that he was able, and he was able to heal. Uh, there are diseases there in families. We go to the next one, helmet of salvation. Uh, we know that helmet is a sign of identity. Helmet is a sign of identity. When you are in a work, when someone is in, is in a workplace, if he or she has a helmet in that workplace. It's a, it means that he belongs to that place. So this salvation the Lord has, uh, has given us, it is a sign that we belong unto him. He has saved us and he has redeemed us. So it is only through Jesus Christ that is in Acts, Acts 4 verse 10 to 12. Acts 4 verse 10 to 12. Let it be known unto you all, uh, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you all, that he speaks of the man who was killed. And then this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone and then the last one. Nor is there salvation in any other, in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. It is only through Jesus Christ. And then we know in Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, that we obtain this salvation 
when we were first we first confessed with our mouth that the Lord uh, our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from death. This is usually the foundation of uh, any believer. We believe in our mouth, uh, we confess with our mouth, we speak with our own mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from death. And then it is through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. This salvation is through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 13. Uh, second Thessalonians 2 verse 13 last week. Uh, in Philippians 2 verse 12 to 16, Paul is exhorting the Philippians that they should work on their own salvation. And uh, I also, I, the, the Lord now speaks unto you, let us work on our own salvation, let us work on it, that we may in the end obtain the, obtain the helmet or, or obtain the, the crown that the Lord has set for us, that we shall obtain it. And then... And then the, the next one is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Is the next one, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17, all scripture is inspired by God. All scripture is inspired by God. And then it's given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So this scripture will not be neglected as a Christian. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the Lord has given us this word that through it we may work our salvation in truth and we may obtain. And then it is a life, it speaks to our hearts. It is for us fellow, says the word of God is living and active. It is able to speak unto you every mo any moment. And uh, it speaks unto you the will of God. Uh, it is only through the it is through the Holy Spirit who speaks to our hearts and convicts us of our sin that we are not in line with the word of God and asks us and uh, teaches us to move away for that. And then piercing even the division of soul and spirit of days and marrow and it is the design of thoughts and intents of the heart. So it sees your heart, it knows your heart, all of your heart. Uh, this word of God. So and then I will like to exhort us that let us be the doers of the word of God. In James 1 25 it says that uh, but he who looks unto the law of the Lord and perseveres, being no hearer that forgets, but the doer that acts, he shall be blessed in all he does. So let us be the doers of this word and then meditate on this word day and night. When Joshua was given the mandate to lead the Israelites, he was told that uh, this, this book of the law shall not be part of the out of your mouth. But shall meditate on it day and night, every day, that you may not go, uh, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous and you will have good success. That is about the word of God. Then, through the word of God, God, uh, through his word, God hears our prayers. Proverbs 28, verse 9. He says that he who neglects the word of the Lord or the law of the Lord, even his prayer is an abomination to the Lord. So the word of the Lord is very important in the in our prayers. So if we neglect it, our prayers will just be an abomination to the Lord. One who turns away is here from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Amen? Amen. And then the last one, constant prayers in spirit. It is a command. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says that men want to pray and faint not. Amen? Amen? And then we have to pray in faith. That is in James 5, 13 to 18. We have to pray in faith. James 5 verse 13 to 18 tells us of one character there called Elijah, the prophet. 
that he prayed in Israel and he believed in faith that God was able and through his prayers there was uh, there was famine in three and a half years and then he prayed again and there was rain. So these are the effects of prayer. It is through faith. We communicate to him and he communicates to us with his prayer. We communicate to God and he also communicates to us. Uh, when we see in uh, Daniel 10, 12 to 14, when uh, Daniel had prayed to the Lord, the Lord sent his angel to come and uh, effect what he, he wanted. He, uh, Daniel had asked. So we see here the aspect that the Lord, when we pray to the Lord, he answers our prayers. And then we do not know how to pray. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, helps us to pray. That is Romans 8, verse 26. And then prayer helps us overcome temptation. Matthew 26, verse 41 says that uh, watch and pray that you may not fall into temptation. So this prayer helps us not to fall into temptation. Then uh, why do we need to have, what shall we do then that we may keep this that the Lord has given us? The first thing, walk in the spirit since you have been raised in the spirit. That is in Galatians 5 verse 25. Allow him to walk on you. For he says in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 to 17 that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Enable him, give him a chance to walk on you and she shall show you even the will of the Lord. And then do not quench him. Do not despise the Holy Spirit. Do not cause him to be angry. That is in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19. This Spirit, the Lord, has given us as a counselor, as, as the one who is going to guide us in his truth. And then Jesus was able, and we are also able to overcome this. That is in Hebrews 2, verse 18, which happens to be the one we have read in our Bible study. That the Lord Jesus Christ was able, he was in the flesh and was able. And then, if we do all things, we are supposed to remain still and stand in the, our tempers, that is in 1 John 1 verse 7. The Lord wants us to live in the light. And He is also in the same light. 1 John 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light, and He is in the light, He is with us. We have fellowship with one another, us with Him. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. So let us always abound in Him, Jesus Christ, who is with us, fellowshiping with us, allow Him to work on you. Then in conclusion, I want to add this. Uh, I want to tell us what the Lord says in Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall, shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Let us rise and pray.